Unlabeled, unassuming, untested. Ever since the agrochemical tomato called Flavor Saver was deemed fit for human consumption in 1994, there has been a surge of genetically modified foods onto our supermarket shelves. And unlike Europe, there is no mandate in the US for food companies to label products that contain what are known as genetically modified organisms. Rice, corn, peas, soy, potatoes, squash, zucchini, salmon and milk all of these foods sit innocently on our grocery shelves next to their organic counterparts. They look the same, smell the same, and even taste the same. But 60% of food that we eat every day has a potentially dangerous secret lurking in its DNA. Growth defects, infertility, disease, and allergies have all been linked to the creation and consumption of genetically engineered food. But somehow, these issues have been swept aside. Questions we should be asking, like where does my food come from and how safe is it, have been buried in the booming new GM food industry. What is GM food? Well, genetically modified food is crops, plants and animals whose DNA has been altered for agricultural and nutritional reasons. It began in 1946, when two scientists called Joshua Lederberg and Edward L. Tatum conducted an experiment and discovered that DNA could be transferred from one species to another through a process called bacterial conjugation. This discovery has led to the development of special rice that can prevent blindness, herbicide-resistant crops, disease-resistant vegetables, and livestock growth hormones, which all improve farming efficiency. Today, the GM food industry makes $85 billion in the US market alone. Food companies in the media argue that the GMO revolution is the answer to our modern agricultural problems. But in 1998, when the GM industry was still in its infancy, Dr. Arpad Pushtai from the Rowett Research Institute in Aberdeen uncovered a shocking truth about species manipulation while he was conducting a GMO experiment on rats. Pushtai found that when his rats ate genetically modified potatoes, they developed cancerous cells in their intestinal tracts and brains. When his research went public, Pushtai was bombarded with criticism from the food industry and academics who said that his experiment was flawed. His research was effectively quashed by the big GMO players. His career was publicly ruined and GMO was left to blossom into the $16 billion seed industry that it is today. But when huge food corporations like Kraft, Nestle and Hershey refuse to use GM organisms in their products for the European food market, what does it tell us about the safety of these so-called frankenfoods? After all, to get the results we want, we have to tinker with DNA, which is the blueprint for all living things. DNA is a complex molecule that lives inside the nucleus of a cell. When GM food is produced, biochemists have to artificially force the DNA from one species into another. This involves scrambling a food organism's blueprint, which changes its behavior and characteristics. If human error could be totally eliminated from DNA manipulation, then GM foods could very well be the technological miracle that we are after. By creating herbicide and pesticide resistant crops, we might be able to provide an adequate food supply for a growing world population and get closer to beating starvation and malnutrition. But disrupting DNA is a tricky business and skeptics don't think these code-scrambling scientists have a proper understanding of what is really happening in our DNA. Jeffrey Smith is a consumer activist and the executive director of the Institute of Responsible Technology. His research taught him that when biochemists insert a foreign gene into new DNA, they can't determine where it's going to end up on the DNA strand. Depending on where the new gene lands, it has the potential to disrupt traits that are already expressed naturally within the organism and this can cause some truly weird and devastating results. In 1985, a group of pigs were pumped with a human growth hormone that was designed to make them grow bigger and faster than normal, but the procedure didn't go according to plan. The pigs were born severely deformed. Some didn't even have an anus or genitals. And who's to say this won't happen again? Perhaps next time with even worse consequences. Activists argue that we still don't know enough about gene expression to be playing with the DNA of living organisms. One scary possibility that could occur from eating these foods is that we become susceptible to DNA-related diseases. Like Pushtai's rats and their cancerous intestines, there's a chance that similar DNA mutations could also occur in humans from eating GM foods. 
and this could cause irreversible genetic damage to our bodies. And the terrifying part about all this is that in the USA, we have no idea when we're shoveling these frankenfoods into our mouths. At the very beginning of the GM revolution in 1988, 60 countries at the International Federation of Organic Agriculture Movements conference voted unanimously to ban GMOs from food production. Today, the American Academy of Environmental Medicine still argues against the consumption of GM foods. And even scientists from the leading agrochemical corporation refuse to eat certain GMO products. Monsanto in Missouri was one of the first companies to supply farms with GM seeds, but several of its major employees won't drink any other milk than organic. Why? Because the GM growth hormone, RBGH, which is injected into milk-producing cows, has been proven to have cancer-causing properties. GM skeptics say there hasn't been enough testing to determine the outcome of drinking milk from a genetically modified cow. But if you're lucky enough to avoid a GM cancer scare, there are still allergies to worry about. The new proteins added to crops like soybean have been linked to an increase in serious food allergies, which can cause rash, diarrhea, difficulty breathing, and in serious cases, anaphylaxis and death. What's scary about these adverse reactions to GMOs is that they can't be avoided by just leaving those foods out of your diet. Once you've been exposed, the crop's DNA can make it into your own and integrate itself into your genetic makeup. This means that it could be years since you last drank GM soy milk, but you could still suffer from the nasty symptoms caused by its allergenic protein. One of the major differences between organic and GM crops is the way that they grow. Genetically modified plants have to be replanted every year, but normal seeds can be reused over and over again. If GMO seeds replace these natural seeds, then the Earth's ecosystem could be changed forever. The benefits of GM foods and the lack of regulation for them mean that we could soon live in a future where nothing but genetically modified crops dominate the landscape, and the natural form of wild crops are wiped off the planet. This would leave us totally vulnerable to the dangers of genetically modified food, where every mouthful is a gamble with our life.